Well, <clears throat> I'm running an ICOM 7300 with an ICOM PW1 solid state amplifier, about one kilowatt into a hex beam. So that's the uh, working conditions here. The uh, weather right now is plus nine Celsius and uh, a rain and overcast uh, sky today. So, uh, 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 good to work here for the first time, uh, Stefan. I uh, hope uh, all is well in Poland. Uh, Sugar Papa 6 Kilo Sierra, W3FOX, over. Good as well. Hi, this is Computer Voice on behalf of Peter, Sierra Papa 2 Bravo Papa Delta. This is a presentation of a simple software for comparative measurements of signal-to-noise ratio of two antennas or receiving channels. I've written this code to facilitate comparison of receiving antennas on short waves. It doesn't mean its use is limited to this task. You may use it as you wish. I have always been interested in receive antennas and have noticed an inconsistency in the opinions often expressed in the ham radio community. We often compare antennas in terms of their reception quality and use phrases, this antenna is quiet and that one is noisy. Such way of description may lead to misunderstandings, because it happens sometimes that quiet antenna, i.e. with much lower efficiency, will not provide better reception than an antenna with high efficiency. All that matters is the signal-to-noise ratio of the two antennas. But how to measure it? On a more sophisticated level, we use the RDF ratio to compare receiving antennas. According to Wikipedia Relative Directivity Factor, RDF, is a figure of merit for radio receiving antennas, it is the antenna gain in the forward direction divided by the gain in all other directions. It is also called the signal-to-noise improvement factor. Signal-to-noise improvement. When we compare two antennas pointed in the same direction and one of them has RDF 12 dB and the other has RDF 8 dB, we expect to hear a 4 dB improvement in signal-to-noise ratio. Well exactly, we expect to. But the question is has anyone ever measured it? At least I have not come across experimental results that confirm this equality between the SNR improvement and the RDF difference of the two antennas. Maybe this program would be helpful in such experiments. My program is not a revolutionary one. It uses the signal-to-noise ratio measurement idea made possible with Linrid by Leaf, Sierra Mike 5 Bravo Sierra Zulu. Some time ago I made a video in which I showed how to compare SNR using Linrid. You will find a link to that video below. Linrid works with two synchronous, coherent, receivers. Since it is not necessary to use coherent receivers to compare the SNR of two antennas, I came up with the idea of writing this software to process the data obtained from the two channels, left and right, of the computer's sound card. The two receivers don't have to be identical. Actually, there may be quite a large, up to one second, delay between them. Let us look at possible setups. First, two traditional receivers. The audio signals are fed to the left and right inputs of the computer's sound card. Second arrangement, two software-defined radios. In this case, virtual audio cables will come useful. A third layout. Mixed. One traditional receiver and one software defined. Here you will also need virtual audio cables. I use the following connections. Now let us look at an example. I used a mixed circuit, transceiver plus SDR. We expect a severe delay to occur in the SDR path. Okay. I won't comment now because the video speaks for itself.
Good. Now the information about the most important settings. First. Automatic gain control in both receivers has to be off. This is necessary to preserve liner ID and to avoid pumping of the noise. The second condition deals with the required noise and signal level. I have broken it down into three subsections. A. The noise from the antenna should be at least 6 to 10 dB higher than the receiver's own noise. B. The audio noise fed to the sound card is to be at least 6 to 10 dB higher than the sound card's own noise. And finally C. Both the noise and signal should be in the range of 25 to 85 dB. By the way, I have realized now that the noise plotted in red in the example from a minute ago was 3 dB short of meeting this condition. Sorry for this. The third condition refers to the audio bandwidth fed to the sound card. It should be the same for both receivers. It means the necessity of using filters of equal width. This condition must be met in order to reliably measure the noise. So now let us try to evaluate the accuracy of the measurement by comparing it with the Linrid. The difference is 0.2 and 0.3 decibels. This seems like a very decent result. In all the tests I've done so far, I've gotten a compliance to within 1 decibel. Now some hints that may be helpful in using the program. First of all, if we normalize, equalize, the noise level in both channels, it will be immediately visible on the plot, which of the antennas provides better signal to noise ratio. The software can be used on the fly, but it may be more comfortable to proceed in two stages, first recording the signals of interest, and only then processing the data. If you choose to record with Audacity, you will find the RMS signal strength indicator helpful. 0 dB in Audacity corresponds approximately to 90 dB in signals plot 2. You will get the required noise level when the average noise power indicator is barely showing, Note the brighter red indicator. This means that the noise power is somewhere between 25 and 30 dB. If you are running the program on the fly make use of pause, resume button. This will allow you to collect data of several stations or one station at different points in time. Thank you for watching.